Hi everybody, Rob here. It's been a while since I've done a, a 3D related video um, and I've been playing with Epic's MetaHuman. Um, I've got the early access so I thought I'd just do a little introduction to it and, and kind of just talk through a few things I really like about it. Um, I'll start from the get-go by saying at the moment there's no direct export into Cinema 4D um, which is a shame but I imagine it's in the works. Uh, you can currently export from uh, it uses the Quixel mixer, oh no, the Quixel bridge um, software to get the MetaHumans into other software. And at the moment you can do it into Maya or you can take it into Unreal Engine. Um, and from Unreal Engine, there are ways that you can get the, the files out. So we'll, we'll look at in another video, we'll look at how to get stuff into Cinema 4D and use our preferred renders um, and set up materials based on what we get from the MetaHuman. So let's just talk about MetaHuman for a start. So when you launch the site, once you've got your access, uh, you're presented with this screen, which gives you a bunch of kind of pre-made characters here. Um, and just pick one, it doesn't really matter so much to start from, because uh, you can change it quite a lot. Um, but if we just pick one, let's go for this guy here. He looks kind of fairly normal. So you pick this, and this is gonna be your kind of, your base character. Um, and just a quick note here, you see his blue uh, little warning at the bottom here that just says you're only going to get LODs uh, 0 and 1 and they are your highest resolution so you won't get the, the the benefit of having your lower resolution for kind of the, the distance um, generated by this but that's okay for now because we're just going to look at how the system works so click next and this will load up your character and give you the tools to then refine this and change it into the character you actually want it to be. Now, next thing that happens is you get this kind of preview animation, uh, which gives you a little bit of kind of facial animation and just shows you a few uh, different poses. Now, this animation is exactly the same no matter what character you choose, uh, which is quite good because it lets you really kind of evaluate what you're looking at. And I'm just gonna stop this, which will give us our kind of head on view. Now, if you click and drag with the middle mouse button, you'll just rotate around, you just kind of orbit around the head. Uh, if you use the right mouse button, um, you have a bit more control over this. Um, and if you use the wheel, you'll zoom in and out. Uh, that's a kind of a pinchy thing if you're using a, a trackpad. Uh, okay, so you can see there's a hotkey reference over here on the right hand side as well, which gives you a, a, a little sh shortcut list for things that you want to do. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what we can do. Now on the left hand side we've got options for the face, hair and body. So the first one which is quite interesting is this blend. Now this lets you load in some of the other preset characters. Um, let's choose one that's wildly different. Uh, let's go for this guy here. We'll put him in this hole or this socket. Let's choose a female character. So we'll go for this Hannah character, put it there. And we'll choose one more. Let's go for, uh, let's go for this guy this guy here so we'll put him at the top now what this allows you to do is just kind of morph your character between these so you, you, can, you can add some more if you want um, what we can do is we can grab these handles if you can hopefully you can see this let's zoom in a little bit more uh, let's just turn around hopefully you can see this little circle there are a few of these dotted all around um, and you can grab them and if you see on the screen, I can rotate this around either to the center, which is using this original Gavin character, um, or to the corner. So here it's more like this Hannah. And if I grab it again, move it up to the top, it's more like this Coda, um, and so on and so forth. Now, this is it's just a really intuitive way of working. So if you really like the kind of like uh, hit this guy here, uh, Hudson's got a, a fuller face. He's got kind of like a slightly chubbier cheeks, I would say. So if you move towards his area on this kind of palette, then you can see what happens. This guy's now got fuller cheeks and we'll do the same here. We'll fill him out a bit and you can see he's not exactly fat, but you can tell that, you know, he's got a, a fuller face. And if we were to grab the same thing and drag around and you can morph it anywhere in between these. It's not just kind of around the ring. Um, I'm going to go somewhere like this. So let's give him a smaller nose. Let's just give him Hannah's nose. Maybe lift it up just a touch. 
And you can do the same with the mouth. You can make it fuller, give it fuller lips, more pouty, so on and so forth. This is an incredibly fast way of just kind of saying, well, I like these bits of this character and so on and so forth. And I'm going to thin his cheeks out a bit, I think. Um, and then we can go on to things like skin. Um, and you can choose the color just to click on that and a pop-up pop comes up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to go to the preview again, but I'm not going to play it. Um, I just want to have a quick look. So what I want to do is give him some more texture on his face. So if I go to things like freckles, um, I can change the density, strength, saturation, tone shift, uh, or I can just click on here and give him one of the presets. Now that looks a bit too much to me. Let's reduce it. And I think for this character, actually, that works quite well. Although I might, I might increase the density, but change the saturation. I'm just going to reduce that down because I think it's a bit over the top. And reduce the strength. There we go. That looks quite good. Gives him a bit more, just a kind of a just a bit more detail in his skin. Okay, so let's go on to accents. And you can see here, we can change things like the forehead, the scalp. Um, we have under eye, so you can give him some dark bags. Let's, let's do this now. Let's go for, we could, if we actually grab the control, you can see that we can give him, you know, he needs a bit more sleep. Um, or if you go back further, then, you know, he's almost zombified there. Uh, so let's give him some red under the eyes. Um, Make that a bit darker, maybe. Like so. Uh, and I'm going to go for the cheeks. Let's give him some kind of ruddy cheeks. Might make them a bit lighter. Somewhere on there. Okay, let's back out. Just going to zoom out a bit to check him out. If you want to, at any point, you can play the, the preview. That's looking pretty good. Okay, so we can do similar things with things like the teeth. You can see that that opens up, and if we zoom in, we can add plaque, we can change the gum color, all that kind of stuff. We can make his teeth a little less perfect by just jiggling around with the variation tool. Um, and you can change things from the tooth spacing, and there are various different things here. So we can have receding gums if we want to, you can have the teeth worn down, and you can really kind of play with this. Uh, you can open the jaw. This is more of a preview thing. Uh, it's not affecting the, the mesh, this is just how we're viewing it. Um, makeup, we can have smoky eyelashes and all that sort of thing as well. Um, change the eyebrows, let's zoom out, give him some real bushies. There we go. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, and same with beard and moustache, all that stuff. We can add it all in, let's give him a big yeah, not a curly beard. Let's give him a, a short, full beard. So that looks pretty cool. Quite like that. Now, just a note while I'm here on lighting. At the moment, this is set to a studio. If you click on there, it says studio there. We can see some different environments. So we could give him an outdoor environment. It just changes the lighting just that bit. Uh, it just lets you kind of evaluate how you're going to use this in a project. And how you're... So if you're changing things like... The, the lightness of textures, uh, then this is a good thing to do. So let's just go back to, I like the studio, it's kind of quite balanced. Um, I'm not gonna worry about all these controls, you can see what they're doing, you can see how they work, all very intuitive, works really, really easily. Um, body type, this should zoom us out a bit so we can choose what this guy's body looks like, we'll kind of give him a weight, um, or you can make him very slender. Uh, now, you can see here that as much as these look more feminine and these ones on the right look more masculine, you can click on them. Um, actually, when it comes to things like um, if you're using a female character, you can still give them a beard or a hair that you might consider to be masculine. Um, so that's all easy to do. You can change the color and type of some of the clothing already. Um, but what I think is actually really kind of exciting about this, and this works a little bit like the uh, the blend controls we had earlier, is that you have stuff like this. Now these are the move controls, and this lets you just grab an area. And this is quite a general area, and you click on the handle, and you can really dive in and just do some crazy stuff with this. So you can adapt the shape of the eyes and 
pull the nose down, bring it back a bit. And it's just so easy to work with. It's um if you've ever used Daz Studio or Poser or any of those kind of things, they, they make all this kind of seem quite easy, but the results are sometimes need a bit of playing around with to make them work properly. Uh, whereas this it's just so incredibly intuitive. Um, so you can do that, and then you can also come to Sculpt, which is a bit more like the blend controls, uh, in the fact that we're using these little circular handles. Um, but in a similar way, you just drag them around, and really helps you keep what looks like a, a realistic result. Let's just give them a bit of a square, a jaw. And now you can see kind of a bit Abe Lincoln like isn't it? Uh, let's just go to the preview and play that again. So just a few simple controls have created this human which is well that's uh, it's pretty realistic. Now you can export the textures from this at 8k so let's talk about that. Let's just say let's just stop this. Let's just give him a name. Let's call him well I'll just call him Rob for now actually. Let's call him Abe. Um, so I'm just going to click on that. Now what happens is that this is now saved. This is It's like working with a Google Drive. So if you look up here on the top right, it says all changes saved, which means that this character now lives in your My MetaHumans folder, um, which can either live on the website, uh, which is going to go back and reload that, or if we go to the bridge software, let's just bring this in, so Quixel Bridge, which you might use for all kinds of materials things that you're going to then send into other 3D packages, but also has this tab here for MetaHumans. Now you can play with the presets, um, or there's a tab here for your humans, and all you do is you can click on one, you can download it, and once it's downloaded, um, let's just click on one I've already got, so this is Zoe, you can see that we have a selection here of 8k 2k and 1k resolution um, if we click on the settings we can look at the download settings and the export settings and the exports what's in kind of important here so you can export for Maya and you can see we have a list of software here now at the moment most of these don't work most of these uh, are, will just give you an error message so if I click on cinema 4d um, the plugin is installed um, but that's because this is a Quixel bridge plugin um, for other elements of, of Quixel bridge uh, as soon as you try and export a meta human it won't work um, so Maya and Unreal Engine they only to the work we can come into the textures tab and we can choose what we're going to actually export and this will export all the maps for these that are perfectly UV mapped um, and we can choose a format for them uh, same for for the models and everything uh, we can choose what we're going to have so we've got an unreal asset here um, or you can choose <coughs> excuse me source assets and uh, a mix of the both um, and LODs which like I've said before and um, the LODs for a lot of these elements especially I think is hair uh, only use zero and one um, so once that's done you can go back and then you just hit export and then it will save to your hard drive um, if you have Unreal open and running with a level open and hit export to Unreal then it will open that as a blueprint in your current Unreal project which is pretty cool as well um, so in future videos I'm going to talk about that more because I think that's where the real excitement is here um, but I wanted to just kind of say this is what I've been doing and what I like about it and give you a quick overview um, I think what's really cool is taking this into Cinema 4D or whatever software you're using, it could be Blender or whatever, and there are ways of doing it which aren't perfect yet. Um, I imagine Epic's probably working quite hard on getting that all working, um, but I will show you how you can export in the next video um, into Cinema 4D uh, using whatever renderer you choose. Um, I'll just use physical render I think to, to show you in the video, but you could use Redshift or Arnold or whatever it is that you want to use, Octane maybe. Um, and uh, show you how you can get some really high-end results out of this um, setups and lighting and get these textures looking really really gorgeous um, so thanks very much for having a watch of this um, I've been Rob and see you all again soon